Well, let's cover this. 2017, Title Tuesday, Explanation. I have read some strange comments from the audience and heard some unpleasant reviews from the great Hikaru. Okay, the, the great Hikaru, okay. So, so first of all, I, I like how he starts this out, uh, patronizing me, the, you know, great Hikaru. I would like to clarify how my class has participated in the online tournament so that most of these comments can be answered. As I was playing these tournaments for educational purposes during my move, uh, let, let me, sorry, let me, let me mute the sound. Give me one second from the games. Um, uh, wait, sorry. So as I was playing these tournaments, this is titled Tuesday for educational purposes during my move. And when my opponents were thinking, I would usually come up with two to three candidate moves for the class to think about. Most of the time, most of the time, one of those moves would be played, though sometimes I would be surprised by someone thinking creativ creatively and offering another possibility. That doesn't mean the creative move would be chosen, though if it made sense, I would direct the student's attention to it as well. Okay, um, first bit. So he's, he says that like he would come up with two to three candidate moves for the class. Think about it. now. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be real with with all this. Like. I have seen stuff like this before, but when people do that, it is normally a rapid game. It is not in a blitz game. In a blitz game where it's three plus two, you, there's not enough of a break between every single move to do this consistently. In a rapid game, like say you say you say like I go and play a ten minute game or a fifteen minute game for fun, like sure you can say it's wrong, but if it's a casual game like that, this is the sort of thing that I would I would think makes a lot of sense in terms of a storyline. And something that I, I would not really have any big deal with. Obviously, if there's prize money in those events, it's wrong. But if it's just like you do like two casual games or like rapid chess, you know, yeah, it's not good. You're not setting a good, good tone or trend. But I don't think it's the end of the world. But to say that you're doing this where like every move you're coming up with two to three candidate moves, as you guys have probably noticed from when I play Title Tuesday, trying to, trying to like, there are not many moments when your opponents actually think for long enough where you can actually give two or three moves. Like it requires your opponents thinking for five seconds or more in order for you to be able to explain that to say like a crowd of crowd of kids or people who are watching game. Um, so this already starts off on a very unusual, unusual trend uh, for me because I, I find it hard to believe that his opponents are thinking for five seconds every single move. Okay, now to understand, um, now, to understand the nature of, of the improvement in the level of the chess game with this model, when one of the students is secretly using AI, you can imagine that if one of those two to three moves would be the best, he would always be voting for it and thus skewing the result in favor of that move. Okay, with a relatively small class size of seven to eight students, one vote always for the best move that probably came with a good dose of confidence would swing the vote toward the best move of a significant percentage of the time to make a huge difference in the level of my play. Okay, I am really surprised that many of you are more concerned with calling me names rather than focusing on the real problems. Chess.com is releasing confidential emails without the other party's consent, effectively utilizing a hidden weapon, weapon to try and destroy a chess player's career, trying to destroy chess players' careers. They have lawyered up to defend themselves and even hired a face-saving firm, FGS Global, to reduce their risks. They seem to have understood what they have done and are preparing for the consequences. Okay. Um, calling me names, uh, I mean, okay, like, I'm sorry, I, 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 I mean, maybe he's referring, maybe he's actually referring to our chess where people are like, maybe on our chess, people are actually saying, dude, you like, you cheated. So like, what are you complaining about? Um, I mean, maybe that's what he's referring to. Cause I, I don't know what else he can possibly really be saying here. Um, okay. Magnus Carlsen has implicated me in a worldwide chess scandal, not only without proof, but with outright malice. I told his good friend and trusted advisor, Richard Kahn, in a telephone conversation on Monday before Magnus released a slanderous statement that I am not working with Hans and have only been replying to his questions about whether to attend certain tournaments. Even though I used the word mentor in the telephone conversation, it was pretty clear I was not involved with anything to do with Hans's preparation for the game. Magnus got the word mentor from Richard Kahn and clearly the whole content of the conversation, yet decided to pursue this angle of malicious attack making the world believe the word mentor meant coach so as to connect me to this affair. Okay, uh, again, I mean, I, I don't, I really don't know where this is coming from. Um, I mean, uh, sorry, who is Richard Kahn? Not, not to sound ignorant. I mean, um, who is this? Oh, it's this guy. This is the guy who was involved with like Gary, I think when Gary ran for, uh, ran for FIDE president, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I mean, this is, this seems like, really stretching really stretching so you had a conversation and magnus 
So this guy had a conversation with Delugi, and then this guy who's like prominent, I think he's a prominent, actually pretty prominent lawyer. He then he then goes and tells Magnus after having a, after having a conversation that like Delugi said this, and that's how Magnus reaches his conclusion. I, I don't know that that seems I, I don't know somehow that seems uh, uh, that seems a little bit far fetched. I'm not gonna lie, that seems far fetched. I, I don't know. I don't know. That that that, that does seem kind of kind of far-fetched okay chess.com quickly joined the fight against me by releasing classified emails he carved Sheridan with laughing at anything I had to say at his streams while not disclosing to the world that his stepfather Snill has a business of running chess and chess at schools in Westchester and Greenwich Connecticut where he decided he is in direct competition with me when I gave a free simultaneous exhibition to kids at Greenwich Country Day School where Snill's company had taught for decades and proposed to take on chess for kids in grades not taught by Snill Snill went ballistic Okay, so first things first, uh, I, I will clarify, clarify a few things. I, I like how disingenuous this is in general terms. My stepfather has been running programs in Greenwich, Westchester, New York City for the last 50 years. So, you know, he decided that he, he decided that he's in direct competition with you. Like, I'm sorry, dude, but he's been doing this far longer than you have. Um, so I don't really I don't really understand this. Uh, and now he says he called out Mark Kurtzman, a prominent chess educator in New York City who runs Tri-State tri Chess, this classic program involved in dozens of schools in New York City. Okay, and with whom I run tournaments at Chess Max Academy at 110 West 79th Street and told him not to move in on his turf. When Mark explained he only does turns with me and not the school program, Snill told Mark that because I am trying to move in on his turf, he will put me back in jail where I belong. First of all, objection here, say, at this point, Chess Max Academy is trying trying in three schools in Greenwich, Connecticut, and one in Rye, New York. All right. So I again, I don't know where he's going with this, but as someone who's been in who's been in the world of chess for long enough, acting like somehow this is about me or my stepfather instead of the actual topic, which is about Maxim Delugi and the fact that he cheated on Chess.com, uh, it's really grasping at straws. And the other point I will make is anybody in New York City who is taught private lessons, taught in schools, knows that every single person is very defensive of their turf. Everyone is. Doesn't matter whether it's whether you're talking about my stepfather. Doesn't matter about talking about, you know, other big groups in the city and Brooklyn everywhere. Everyone tries to protect their turf. This is not some like some new thing. Uh, everyone, every, everyone does this. Okay. I did ask Mark Kurtzman for permission to quote him and he agreed. To make it more clear, to make it more clear, Sunil's chess program is called National Classic Chess Foundation. Sunil, who is 71 years of age, will be giving this program to his stepson Hikaru when he retires. In effect, Hikaru is using his stream to attack a business rival. Fine, but admit it first. Okay, I'm sorry, Maxime. I will say this straight to the camera. You're completely out of your mind and insane. Um, my stepfather has spoken to me about this, as well as my brother. Neither of us have any intention of taking over the National Classic Foundation whenever that time comes. Uh, my brother works at J.P. Morgan Chase. He's in finance. I'm obviously a streamer and a professional chess player. So you're completely out of your mind. And, um, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice way to try and deflect and concoct some sort of conspiracy theory. But you're you're 100 percent wrong. If anything, I am. If anything, I'm going to be the one who is supporting my stepfather in retirement when that comes. Uh, and he is not like it's not some huge empire, which is making millions of dollars a year. So I'm sorry, Maxime, but, you know, you should get your facts straight. But aside from that, aside from that, um, uh, oh, sorry, where was I going? Aside from that, this is deflecting from the actual issue here, which is that this is about cheating on chess.com. This is not about like me. It's not, you know, it's, it's not about Magnus. It's, it's about cheating on chess.com at the end of the day. Um, so that's that's my two cents. Um, but let's see what does he say anything else? He says, so let's get the following straightened out. Apology from Magnus Carlson for involving me in this. Apology from chess.com for releasing our confidential emails. Statement from Ikaru that there is a conflict of interest that he is aware of before he attacks me further protect, to protect his stepfather's business and his personal interests. Oh my God. Um, what what am I supposed to say to that? Like, as I said, my stepfather's been teaching. He's been teaching in New York and, and, and the tri-state area for the last 50 freaking years, dude. Like, you don't know what you're talk talking about. Actually, sorry, it's not 50 years. It'd be 46 years. Um, it was 1978 when he had his first program, I believe, at Hunter, Hunter Elementary, uh, Hunter Elementary and, and, and College. Um, so, yeah, I have a conflict of interest, you guys. Yeah, like I, I, I said before, I have zero interest in ever taking over my stepfather's foundation. But I like that Delugi makes up this complete story that is total total you know horse something um 
Yeah. Oh, like, what am I supposed to say to that? Other than, you know, I'm sorry, Maxine, but you, you, you can, you can, you can spout that, but you don't, you don't know what you're talking about at all. Um, yeah, I, I said, sorry, only 46 years, right? Only 46 years. Exactly. Um, right. And, and, and let's, let's see what else does he say? He says, I am also very interested in Reddit, R Reddit readers actually reviewing the 2020 title Tuesday games where I categorically did not use any assistance, did not cheat as I'm appealing the chess.com fair play violations in a public court. I think going through a process of appeals through chess.com is ludicrous as they were the judge, jury, and judge as they, as they are the judge, the jury, and the executioners. Um, all right. Well, as someone pointed out, one of the things from the article we covered yesterday, which I thought was really funny as well, is that when when Delugi was uh, was told that, you know, that he had he had been using assistance, his response to um, to chess.com was in seven minutes. So when they gave him the 72 hours to figure out what he wanted to do, he took all of seven minutes before before admitting that he cheated in that email that he even showed. So he had 72 hours. He took seven minutes that, you know, I know we like to believe chess players are really smart. But if we really are that smart, you guys, what would you do? We, you think logically, you think ahead, you try to plan out, strategize. No, seven minutes, I'm going to respond immediately. I'm going to respond. Seven minutes. <laughs> As we see for the probably the 20 millionth time on my stream, I'm going to reiterate another point. Chess players are not geniuses. We're very good at moving carved wood. There we go. All right. Um, so yeah, obviously Maxim is getting no such statement from me as, as we know he's, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about.